Sun and Shine is a European, probably German in origin, manufacturer of uh, industrial batteries of the AGM kind. And I am a shameless fanboy of their products and I aim to illustrate why in this video. I got these two batteries in a set of 12 out of a UPS unit that I got for free a long time ago in 2008 or 2009 and uh, every single one of these batteries had been uh, left sitting for a long time in the UPS uh, they are marked uh, something and the other 04 on the bottom which could be a date code but I believe they are older than that but uh, these were uh, all of them had uh, zero volts or below zero. Some of them actually had a slight negative voltage to them from uh, having been improperly uh, stored and then uh, the UPS had been turned on and attempted to charge the batteries which didn't work quite well. So that was many years ago and I then I didn't use the UPS because a couple of the batteries didn't work but uh, I believe 10 of them did work to an extent that it would allow them be, to be used in various applications which already is very very impressive for an AGM brick that has been allowed to be discharged to zero volts every single battery in that unit had zero volts or negative voltage across the terminals so I shipped most of them off, sold them in various <laughs> random UPS units and used them for various small projects. And these two used to be in my uh, modem UPS. I had a DC UPS for my internet modem at home. And uh, I replaced that system with a system where they're powered by my server. Uh, not uh, terribly long after I got these, probably in 2011 or so. I think so, 2011, when I got the server. And since then, these batteries have been allowed to sit until they have zero volts across the terminals again. And we can confirm that on this one. Ninety-six millivolts. I did dab it with a charger for about a couple of seconds before I realized I wanted to make this video. However, the other one should read quite a bit differently. Thirteen point four volts. I just took it off the charger, it's been sitting for about a day, and it was drawing seventy milliamps at fifteen volts, which is frankly excellent for a bat battery of this kind at that voltage. Now, you can have voltage across one of these pa batteries but it's entirely worthless if the in internal resistance is extremely high which usually is the case in these AGM bricks. They age, the electrolyte uh, turns into gas and the, they just uh, the active material on the plate will it will be able to have voltage but most of the planes won't have any electrolyte or they'll be cracked so the surface area of a lead is extremely small so they won't be able to deliver any current at all they usually won't even light an LED even if they have over 13 volts across them however this is a a hundred and something a hundred and a hundred and thirty watts car light bulb and uh, this battery will light it without a problem. There you go. Nine point something volts. So it isn't really in new condition anymore. But this is a battery that's at least 11 years old and has been improperly char charged during storage for several of those years in a row twice. This battery has been sitting with zero volts for probably eh, two years, something along those lines, and it's been deeply discharged prior to that because I, the it was connected to some charging electronics that I just didn't bother disconnecting. And uh, 
I figure I'd show that I'm not just tricking you because I'm going to charge this battery up now. Alright, we now have my power supply hooked up with my meter in series measuring current. We've got lots of digits, but we've got 110.1 milliamp and 0.1 milliamp there to give you a hint. So let's up the voltage a bit higher. There we go, give it 15 volts and power it on. And right away, <laughs> the battery is drawing tens of milliamps. Uh, this just. You, if I were to hook up any other old UPS battery that suffered even setting for a couple of months at uh, zero volts, it would be using no current. It would simply do nothing at all. All this one's up to 70 milliamps already and climbing right away. So, I'm gonna leave this be just sitting on a 15 volt charge for maybe a day or so, and then we'll check back on it. See if it'll light over bulb like, like its friend does. And we're just about an hour into the charge, and the battery's already drawing. Well, it was drawing almost 300 milliamps, but it dropped down. Either way, 200 milliamps is <laughs> more than respectable. Most batteries, again, would not, in this scenario, do anything at all. They would just sit there, draw no current, be it whatever voltage you set your power supply to, as long as it's not so high that it uh, sparks across the gaps between the plates. So let's turn by the current limit and see what happens. There we go. This power supply actually very, very... Oh no, it's not. It usually, after a while, if you turn the current limit down, loads down the battery very, very slightly. A couple of hundred microamps. But, yeah. The fact that we've got over... 10 or so volts means that every cell in this battery is intact, i.e. it has no shorted cells despite sitting discharged for years and years and years which well that's just amazing from a, an industry standpoint where you want to uh, reliability and where shorted cells can be absolutely devastating since a single shorted cell will ruin your entire battery pack and it might be hard to notice in a system where you've got tens of batteries in series. It's very important to have batteries that are resilient to shorted cells, which your normal Chinese cheapy lead-acid battery is not. And one of those would certainly, if it's not entirely open as they tend to be, have at least a once shorted cell. And it's been charging for about a full day now, maybe bit more, 30 hours or so, I've dropped the charge down to a 13.6 volt float charge after the voltage at 15 volts, or the current at 15 volts, first dropped down to a bit half an amp, and then the current at 14.4 volts, after I dropped down to that, dropped to about 200 milliamps or so, and it's still dropping slightly at 13.6, so the battery's not entirely fully charged but it's getting there. It was a bit warm in the middle of the charge, which should be expected the high resistance of the cells make for a bit of heat every time you charge a bad battery. So let's just try and dis disconnect the charger and uh, see if it'll light the bulb. Uh, right, so when we can see that uh, we don't have any shorted cells it doesn't seem to be quite as good as the other one. That one might even have a higher voltage right now after sitting for a day, but let's see what happens. There we go. Doesn't quite make it as well. This one's not in quite as good condition, but it is definitely lighting the lamp. And that's probably about, I'd say, six or seven amps running through this battery. Definitely not as impressive as this one though. 
Either way, both of these batteries still do work after setting discharged for many years at a time at two different occasions. And they just charged up right away. No fancy pants battery saving wizardry at work. Just hook them up to my normal power supply, charge them at sensible voltages, and they work. They aren't new, but they do work. And that, I think, is enough to warrant a fair amount of fanboyism towards this brand right here. And I have yet to be disappointed by them any time I've had to do with them. So, Sun and Shine batteries. Big thumbs up. Cheerio.